create Battleship from scratch. We first make a new Java class called Battleship Game. First thing I'll do is just is make the main method a string array called arguments. So the first thing I would do is to just um, get some consents right away and so we can use them later more easily and don't have to type in constants every time. So I'll get the game board length, a character for water, let's make it in this. And then we need a char for ship called S and a char for the hit we will display on the game board. Let's make that an X. And um, well, for good measure, you should also display when the user has missed um, a ship and just uh, display also a miss on the game board. And um, we just do our free ships on the map. Okay, so now we have these constants that we can always change later and make the code more changeable. So first we create a char array called the game board. And well, I'll do that with another function. So the main method doesn't get too clouded. And for the game board, what do we need? Well, we need the game board length. Then to create the game board, we will instantiate every cell with water. So we need water. And um, well, we also want to place the ships right there, I would say. And therefore we also need the ship number. This function is um, and flows an error because it isn't um, well created. So we just do it here and as you can see this is a nice shortcut because I don't have to type all this stuff again down here and have all the right um, data types for my parameters of the function. Well, and the return value which will be this 2D array of chores. So um, how, do you, uh, how do we create the game board? We just want a char array called game board. And this will be um, of type 2D char array with its side length being game board length. So you could also plug in the 4 down here. But if you want um, a larger game board, you just do, you just have to change the number up here and not down here again. Could, if you would use the 4 on every single instantiation where you have the game board length, it would be very messy, the whole code. So I'll just do it like that. And then we have to fill this 2D array, obviously, in every cell with um, water. So I will just um, iterate over, um, let's call it row on the game board. So as you can see, I use a shortcut here because I mean, this fits here quite well. And we need Java U to arrays. And uh, we have this function where we can fill the array with char, with an array of chars. So we fill the row with um, the following, so the row is a char array and we fill this char array, so this row, with char well and this char well is um, in our case the water. Alright, so we have that. Okay, and now we have a full game board filled with water. Of course we would also like to have um, the game board filled uh, with the ships and therefore I write a second function, place ships. Um, and this function will return a game board. So I'm just calling the function as return value here. And uh, for placing the ships, we need our game board from here. Then we also need um, the ship number. So we know how many ships we want to place. The water, char, and the ship char. So these characters above here. Okay. And we have the same case again, but it throws an error and we just create the place ships method like this. The ships um, we first in, well need some kind of counter to um, well um, track the amount of placed ships already. So we start here with zero, and then um, this will work like well we, we will have something like while loop down here, and this while loop will run um, as long as um, placed ships is smaller than um, the number the ship number that we have uh, up here. So ship number here. And as long as we haven't placed all ships that is in ship number, this function, uh, this while loop uh, will do its job. And what do we want the while loop to do? Well, um, 
we want to place the ships at a given location. So we um, I will use um, an int array to display the coordinates. I, I won't write an, another Java class here because I think this is, well, it would make sense, but I don't think this is really necessary and would just complicate the code because we are not going into any further detail with um, this battleship game. It will just be plain, uh, not even very exciting battleship game. So I don't think we uh, need to create um, a new Java class here for coordinates. And uh, I would to get a location um, and to make my life easier, I will just uh, write another function, generate ship coordinates, where we need um, the game board length, game board length. So I, I'll just write a new parameter which doesn't exist. And um, we just create here the, okay, this isn't what I want. So we just create it by hand. Um, this is an int called game board length, and this is nothing else than the game board dot length. All right. And um, now we also have to create a new method, generate ship coordinates. And as you can see, everything um, is already typed for us. What we do here is um, to just instantiate an int array called coordinates. And we make it um, an int array that will fit um, well, the x and y coordinates. And um, in order to get one coordinate, because we just returned one coordinate, we will just loop over int i. We loop over the um, coordinate length, so we will. Um, what what we do here is um, we loop over the um, first array value and then also the second. So um, we start with um, the index one and go to the uh, uh, index zero, sorry, and go to um, index one one because the coordinates um, length is two, and if i equals one. Then this is the last iteration of the loop, and if uh, and after this iteration, i will equal two, and we will drop out of the loop, and we will uh, increment i by one after every loop iteration. Okay, so as said before, i will be our index for the coordinates, and we fill these coordinates with a random um, value from um, with this next it function and the range. Well. Um, uh, is, is the inbound, so we, we put in the bound here, which is um, nothing else than here, what we, the game board length that we have up here. So we put that in, and um, after that we filled our um, int array of coordinates, and then we just return coordinates. So we again um, up here, we have our coordinates, and we have to think about, well, generate ship coordinates will, or, or can possibly give us the same location over and over again, although this is not um, so likely, of course, but um, it is possible, and we have to cope with this problem because we cannot just stack the ships on one coordinate. So what we want to do here is, um, well, we need to make um, an if statement, which would look something like, well, possible placement. We get a possible placement, and if this possible placement is water on this game board, then, um, I mean, we can place the ship, right? Because um, there is no ship, and if there's no ship, there is water, and we can place um, the ship there. Uh, so we just, if the possible placement is water, we just um, place um, the ship right there. So the first, um, the x value of the game board or the um, row index will be our x value and um, the column index of our 2D array will be then location 1 here. And there we will put our ship char. Okay, we put um, the ship into game board location 0 and uh, location 1. And then if we place the ship, we just increment the placed ship variable. So uh, now we have to think um, how we um, will get this possible um, placement. And uh, what we can do is, well, the possible placement has to be a char, otherwise we can compare it, so it needs to be a char. And what we can do is we can go to the game board and um, index into the game board with our um, location that we got here. So we just plug in the location values and get this possible placement character. And, um, well, does this work, uh, code work now? I, I have to look at it. Um, while place ships, okay. And location, general ship coordinates, this seems fine. Possible placement, game board, okay. What is important here, so what happens if we generate the same location here over and over again. Well, what happens? This will be executed. We get a possible placement. This won't be true. 
so we just loop again. So this loop iteration will then end here if we uh, if there is a ship already, and we just go on with the while loop forever and ever, right? Until the placed ships are all placed. This only happens if um, there is water in the possible placement location. Well, and in the end, we shouldn't forget to return the game board. Now we um, created the game board. We place the ships down here. We get the uh, ship coordinates, so we can close this right here and jump back into our main function. So what we have done now with these three functions, we created the game board and we placed the ships and generated the coordinates for the ship placement. So what we will now do is, well, imagine you're in the game and nothing ha is displayed so far to the user, so we have to show him um, what he can do. And we will do this by printing the game board. So again, I just typed out a function that I haven't well created yet, um, where we will print our game board. So what do we need to print our game board? Uh, well, we need the game board. And what do we need? Um, well, the water and the ship. Yes, I think that's fine. OK. So created the print game board function. Um, so this is now um, tricky. So how can we print the game board? Well, we can just um, plainly print the game board. We just iterate um, basically over it. Uh, we start with row 0 and go to until the end of the board, which is nothing else than the game board length. So um, you see again, I just created a variable without initializing it, or used it, better said. Uh, we have to initialize it, of course. It is an int. So why am I doing uh, this? Um, I do this because calling game board dot length again and again it's just um, unnecessary. So I'm rather doing it one time and storing it, and therefore get a faster execution time here. This isn't so important because it's a small game and uh, you won't realize the difference. But um, I mean, it's something that uh, it's, it's it's not it's not helpful to to use it. I would say. Okay, so we now have our game board, and we print we iterate over all rows. This is all we do right now. But we also have um, columns, so we have to iterate also over the columns because we have a 2D array. I just call it, uh, yeah, uh, I just call it call uh, to make it a bit shorter. Call until, well, I, I just assumed here that we have um, a square game board, so um, I just use the game board length again. Um, okay, so. Um, now, now we have to think about it. So um, one way is um, to create a master game board now. So two game boards, basically. One game board where we um, just display the water and possibly hits and misses, but no ships. Or we can just display, um, or we just can use one game board and um, just not print out the ships. Um, because we, we're using the, the plain game board here where all ships are already displayed. So we have the water and also the ships and I mean, it, it would be very boring to just see where the ship is. Um, so uh, we, we can do it with the master game board, but I think it is um, more feasible to just do it in a print game board function so that we kind of override, um, well, we kind of override, um, if there's a ship, we just um, print water on this plane. So how can we do this? Um, well, we can just say if the position equals a ship, then we will just say, well, okay, we will print out system out print water. So this is also why I put in the water here, um, so we don't have to worry what the word char uh, water character is. Okay, and I'll just do um, one blank space behind, so uh, you better recognize the single cells in the board. Okay. Well, and if there is not a ship in the position. We just print out system out print the position, I would say, plus this blank space behind it. So, I mean, as you can see now, um, the problem here is um, well, what is the position in the end? And um, I would suggest we make a position, it has to be a char, otherwise, we can't compare it to ship. Um, we, may, we just take from the game board the row. And the column. 